Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. But um, as everyone's entering in, if you want to introduce yourself in the chat, um, that would be great. Love to see where everyone is dialing in from. All right. So to get started, welcome to the Matching Grants for Giving Tuesday uh, webinar. My name is Lisa Galbrin. I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause, and I'm really excited to dive into matching grants today. Uh, so for today's agenda, we're going to be going over general matching grants basics for those of you who are not that familiar with matching grants, why, what they are, and why you should utilize it, um, as well as matching grant strategies, uh, strategies you can utilize for Giving Tuesday when it comes to matching grants. How do you secure a matching grant and how do you create a matching grant? And then how do you promote your matching grant? So at the end, we'll be going over um, any questions that anyone has. So feel free to utilize the questions and answer um, uh, Zoom uh, uh, tool in your uh, Zoom panel. Um, but as more people are coming in, um, you can feel free to, um, as I mentioned, introduce yourself in the chat. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started. So overall for Giving Tuesday, uh, Mighty Cause for those of you who are not familiar, we host our, our own Giving Tuesday event. If you haven't registered yet, you can register today at givingtuesday.mightycause.com. Registration does end um, towards the end of October. So you wanna make sure you register, get that out of the way as soon as possible. Um, some key dates to save and put on your calendar, one being November 15th, that is when early giving opens for our event. So any donations you receive starting November 15th, they will count towards our Giving Tuesday event. And then of course, the big day, November 29th, Giving Tuesday. So what is a matching grant? For those of you who are not familiar to matching grants, or you've heard of it, but you're don't fully understand the idea of a matching grant. Well, a matching grant is a fundraising tool that is used as a donation incentive. So, so traditionally or typically, it is a large donation that you secure. Um, how large that amount is varies, can be from $500 to I've seen a million dollars. So that all varies. And it's offered as a match to an incoming donation. Um, so typically, Matching grants are then provided by a grantor or donor prior to Giving Tuesday or your campaign. So overall, matching grants are marketing tools that help motivate donors to give immediately. They share with donors the impact their, their donation can make and really tell them that their donation can go even further. There are a lot of different types of matching grants that you can create, and I'll go into more detail about the different types of matches later on in this webinar, where we'll break down how you can create these on the platform. But one-to-one -one is the most common type of match. So that means that 100% um, of a donation is matched by a grantor. So if someone makes a $5 donation, that is going to be matched. So it's a $10 donation. However, that percentage can also vary. So the example I gave is 100%, but there are also 50% or 300% per donation matches, meaning that if a donor gives $1, maybe the grantor has agreed to give $2. As well, there are cumulative threshold matches. Um, cumulative threshold matches means that in order for you to receive the match amount, uh, you have to reach a certain threshold. So that could be number of donors. So if you receive 50 donors, you receive the, the match, um, the matching dollars, or you, uh, you know, reach a certain amount of donations or dollar amount. So meaning that it's not a percentage per donation, you have to raise $1,000 in order to receive $1,000 or $2,000, et cetera. So we'll get into a little bit of those uh, a little later. But why utilize a matching grant? Why are we all here today? Why is it worthwhile to go through all of this effort and finding a matching grant and securing one and adding it as a strategy? 
According to double the donation, 84% of donors say that they're more likely to donate if a match is offered by an organization. Because what does a match do? A match generates interest. It acts as a buy one, get one free for a donor. They see that their dollar makes a larger impact during that period or during that opportunity where a match is provided. Um, so it really can help drive volume and traffic to a day like Giving Tuesday. But also matching grants are also great stewardship opportunity if it's for a large major donor that you've already had or a new major donor that you're working towards and providing a matching grant. Is it a, it's a different way that someone can get involved and support and help your organization. So when it comes to donor engagement, we spoke a little bit about this, but in regards to donors and matching grants, as I mentioned, it's a way for donors to maximize their impact for your nonprofit, because it's not just that they're making a $10 donation, they see that their donation, their $10 donation can mean even more and make a larger impact. And when it comes to a grantor, the same thing. Um, you know, if you have a major donor that donates, let's say they write you a thousand dollar check every year, um, if they have that one thousand dollar donation check as a matching grant, well, that means that their donation is actually making a two thousand dollar impact for your nonprofit if you are able to meet that match. So it's a different way for people to get involved with your nonprofit and to really maximize their support. When it comes to sponsorships or partners, it's also an opportunity to break the ice with any potential sponsors or companies that you're interested in working in. Um, it's an opportunity for these sponsors to also get their name out there. Many companies have philanthropic arms to their organizations. So this is an opportunity for them to build that in their community and, and share that with your network. Um, and it's also a cross-promotional opportunity, right? So you can share their name, their logo to your network and vice versa. So when it comes to the matching grants and giving Tuesday, why it's so why it's such a popular and common strategy utilized for giving events in general is that because it builds this sense of urgency, because not because donors are, you know, are aware that, okay, if I make a donation now, it's going to be matched. It's really helpful for days like giving days where you really want donors to go and make that commitment of making that donation. Um, and so with that, with um, giving events or in general giving Tuesday, it then can help you win prizes, win leaderboards, hourly prizes, et cetera, based on also how you strate strategically implement that during the day. So now that we've talked about um, just why it's useful and what is a matching grant, we're gonna talk about some common matching grant strategies. But before we get into the strategies, it's really important to know what your overall goal is because that's gonna really impact what you're gonna do with the matching grant, right? So you wanna think about what is your overall goal for Giving Tuesday? Every nonprofit has a completely different goal. For some, it's that they want to raise a certain amount. For one nonprofit, that could be $5,000. For another nonprofit, that can be $50,000. For another nonprofit, it could be, you know, they don't care as much as the dollar amount, but they care about, we want 50 donors to make a commitment and donate to our cause. So think about what is your overall goal for Giving Tuesday? What do you want to accomplish? Because that can help navigate what do you want to do with the matching grant? What is your goal for the matching grant? So you want to think about all of those things um, before you kind of jump into a matching grant. So if your overall goal is donor acquisition, you may want to consider a matching grant that's fueled by unique donors. Um, so we talked about that you can create a matching grant that is based off the number of donors you received. So if donor acquisition is really important, that may be something that you want to utilize when it comes to matching grants. Um, so you want, since the goal is just getting donors donating to your cause, regardless of their donation size, um, make sure to mobilize your army of, you know, your network of people to let them know how many donors you need to reach your match. 
Um, and because you know, you just need donors to make a donation to meet your match, regardless of size. It's also helpful then to include donation level descriptions in your communication. How can $5 or $10 make an impact to your organization in addition to your match? So if the goal is also donor engagement, you may want to consider a match that's based off the number of donations. So it doesn't matter how many donors you receive, a donor could make you know, two donations and it counts towards your match. So this is really helpful, if, especially during a, um, a, a, a challenge where there's the competition is the most raised dollars during an hour. Um, that's a really useful um, matching grant uh, strategy to implement, which is you receive it only when you have a number of donations made. Um, also, a very common strategy that nonprofits use um, with matching grants is having it as the kickoff to their Giving Tuesday campaign, uh, because this really builds excitement and also sets the tone for your overall Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, they, you know, donors are then immediately know that this is the day to give, this is the day to support your nonprofit. Um, Giving Tuesday will, by donating on Giving Tuesday, they're making a large impact. And same thing can go though towards um, your finish line, right? So if you are really wanna make an impact in regards to kind of, you wanna motivate donors at the end of the day to these are the last hours of Giving Tuesday, here's your last opportunity to make your impact towards um, our campaign. I'm um, having a matching grant or having your matching grant go towards the very end of the event is also really one helpful strategy in making sure you meet that goal for the end of Giving Tuesday. Nonprofits don't just have to have one matching grant. You can utilize multiple matching grants and you can have multiple matching grants at once, or you can have them go one after the other. So you can queue a matching grant to start as one end. So you're covering the entire day or you're covering the entire early giving period from November 15th to November 29th. Or, you know, you can even make it a little bit more strategic where you have one all through the early giving season from November 29th, um, I'm sorry, November 15th to November 29th. And then you have one strategically placed on November 29th on Giving Tuesday or throughout the day on Giving Tuesday. Um, you can also create different types of matching grants. They don't all have to be the same. So there's a lot of different ways you can implement matching grants, depending, again, what are your overall goals for the event. Some other strategic elements that you can utilize when it comes to matching grants is a board challenge or pool. So this is also a really common type of uh, matching grant that we see on the platform is board members coming together and pooling their funds together for a matching grant. You can use this hand in hand with a peer to peer fundraising campaign. So on Mighty Cause, we have our teams and events tool that is meant for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And we see a lot of board challenges utilized like this for Giving Tuesday. And so you can combine the two, two if your board members you know, um, are interested in pulling their funds together for a matching grant. And as well, a corporate match. So we talked a little bit about you know, what are the benefits or why a company or, um, or corporation would be interested in providing a match. It's the opportunity for them to share their logo on the match and on email communication, but this could also be um, a strategic way of doing that crossover, doing a social media takeover, for example, um, where you are helping promote your match on their socials or vice versa. Uh, and you can utilize the collab posting on Instagram and Facebook as well to, again, that with that cross promotion. Now that we've talked about uh, some strategic elements that you can utilize for Giving Tuesday or in general with matching grants, we're gonna talk about how do you secure a matching grant. So who provides a matching grant? Well, overall, there are no rules about who provides a matching grant. A matching grant can be anyone. It could be your next door neighbor. It could be your grandmother. There are no rules to who can provide a matching grant. However, typically, matching grants typically come from either your board members or trustees, major donors, 
Um, so donors who typically make a large donation to your organization, sponsors or partners, as well as collectives, so people who are pulling their funds together. So for board members or trustees, this can be an individual board member. So it could be your president um, of the board, or it could be all of your board of directors together. They could pull their funds together, um, like as I mentioned, as one of the strategic elements. For major donors, this could be a new or um, a previous major donor you had, and it's a new way for the major donor to support your organization. For sponsors or partners, it can be a local business or company you worked with. And for collectives, it doesn't just have to be, you know, your board of directors. It could be also your staff, volunteers, or any support network that you are associated with. So there's really three easy steps when it comes to securing a matching grant, and that's broken down into prospecting, outreaching, and then asking. So prospecting meaning identifying the exact people that could be a potential source of matching grants, starting that conversation, and then making the ask and getting that commitment from um, the prospective grantor. So when you are prospecting of who do I want to reach out to, who would even you know, be interested in providing a match, think about how are they connected to your nonprofit or cause? Um, do they have a history of giving to your organization? Can this prospect give at a higher level? Um, those are the people uh, that would be more likely to provide a matching grant um, to your organization. So look through your donation history, um, you know, the organizations or groups of people that you've, um, that your organization has worked with and see if they kind of fall into any of those categories. So you want to make sure that you are looking within first before you are looking outward. So as I mentioned, your board members, a lot of nonprofits have an annual donation requirement with their organization for their board members. So if there's a board member that hasn't fulfilled that yet, this might be a great opportunity to do that. And as well, there are so many nonprofits that come to us saying, how can I get my board members invested, interested in Giving Tuesday? How can I get them, you know, um, involved in the overall event. And this is a really great opportunity to get them involved and their involvement can make a huge impact. Major gift donors who are really great people to reach out first because they're already invested in your cause. And as I mentioned a couple of slides ago, you know, if you have a major gift donor that always just writes you a check once a year for a thousand dollars, though that's a really great person to reach out to because their gifts can go larger this year. Um, and it's a, also a different ask that you're asking them this year. And then for sponsors, any companies or partners or local businesses that you've worked with in the past, um, again, this is a different ask than a traditional write us a check you know, for a donation. So you wanna make sure that you write a list. Um, you can create a spreadsheet, and think about all of the prospective people and their information and how they're associated with your nonprofit. As a quick homework assignment, you can spend two to three minutes and write down three people you can reach out to about providing a matching grant. If you really have a hard time thinking about, I don't know anyone, I'm not sure who, think about three people who can assist you in your search. Who are three people that can help you pinpoint those individuals or pinpoint out who else you can reach out to. All right, so once you have your list down of all your prospective grantors, it's time to reach out. Um, so with your spreadsheet, you want to, if you are working with a team of people, if you're working with you know, multiple people at your organization or one other person, assign a contact to each prospect because it can get confusing when you have multiple people reaching out to the same donor. So it's much easier if you have one person assigned to each contact and you're keeping notes of all of the interaction and communication you're having with um, the prospective grantors. So obviously a phone call is when you're making it as such an ask, a phone call is a really great way to get the conversation, conversation started. You can set up a meeting, send an email, you know, utilize the communication that you've already had with the donor. 
And you really want to first start cultivating that relationship. So you want to first see, you know, share a little bit about where your nonprofit is currently at, how things are going, you know, checking in with that donor as well. And every prospect is a little bit different. Some don't want any communication. Some don't want to, you know, don't want to chat on the phone. They don't want, you know, email communication. They're more transactional. So really utilize what is the communication that you've currently had with the donor um, and utilize what's most comfortable for them. Um, so do they prefer face-to-face? -face? Do they prefer a phone call? You know, think through, look through your CRM or any notes that you have about that prospective person to cultivate that relationship um, and so that you can best communicate, you know, um, the ask that you're going to be asking. So when it comes to the ask, actual ask, um, you want to make sure that you are taking into account every information that you know about that donor in regards to their preferences, their situation and their needs. Um, you know, for example, if there's something personally going on in their life, they may not be the best person to reach out to at that time. Um, so you want to take all that into account when you are, you know, choosing to make an ask for to a donor. Um, so uh, many individuals may not know what a matching grant is. So you may have to do some explaining a quick breakdown of what it is, and most importantly, how it benefits you. And so making sure that um, it's understood of how, you know, for, for example, for major gift donors, um, that this is really a similar process as to what they were doing before. But, you know, it's just a different, a little bit of different ask or something that they're a little bit different um, to what they're agreeing to. And of course, also, be prepared to be flexible. You may come into the conversation with a specific amount that a prospective grantor may not be ready or comfortable or willing to provide, or they may want to just do a one-to-one, -one, you know, donation. They don't want to do a, you know, amount, a certain amount of unique donors, etc. But overall, just some quick tips about when you are asking people in regards to a matching grant. Um, it is, I reinforcing this in that you want to make sure that they understand what is a matching grant because not everyone understands what a matching grant is, especially if they don't come from the, um, the philanthropy world or the nonprofit world. So you want to make sure that you break that down for uh, the prospective grantor. And as well, you want to be sure that you are prepared with any questions they may ask such as what are your nonprofit's financials? What are your goals for Giving Tuesday? What do you plan on doing with the money? What are your, you know, what is that the overall impact that this grant is gonna make for your work? So you wanna make sure you come prepared with all of those answers um, to their questions. Um, you also want to make sure it is simple and easy. It doesn't have to be too convoluted in the explanation as to what it is. Sweet and simple is always the easiest way to make the ask. And as well, if this is, you know, a major donor where you think that, um, you know, a, a note from your executive director or major gifts officer is going to have a lot of weight uh, towards the, the prospective grantor, then, you know, call upon your team to help you with that. Um, that may be a really great opportunity to get them involved um, so that you can uh, close the match. All right, so if you get a guess, so your grantor has agreed to provide the matching grant, um, you want to, of course, say thank you, but you also wanna make sure you hammer out all the details. So you make sure that you have agreed upon how much it is, as well as when it will be available, but also when they plan on fulfilling that match and how they do that. Just a reminder for Giving Tuesday Almighty Cause, offline donations don't count towards leaderboards and prizes. You can add that into your reporting, but they don't count towards prizes. Um, so you do want to talk through with your grantor how they plan on fulfilling that donation. Um, if they do want to write a check or if they are planning on making that donation online and when they should do that. Um, as well, you want to talk about any other details such as do they want to be anonymous? Do they want to have their name publicly available? 
Um, and do they have any logo, um, a business or something that they want to market that you want to include on your match or in your communication? Now, if you get a no, uh, a no right now is not a no forever. Um, so receiving a no is a really great learning opportunity. And also it can be a future opportunity for a donation or a different ask. So it's a really great opportunity to learn about what exactly was the reason for no, why they weren't prepared to provide a match, what were they not interested in. And again, you're cultivating a, either a new relationship or a budding relationship with a potential donor. Um, and overall, you wanna make it a, just a good experience for a grantor. Um, they are making such a large impact for your organization. And so you wanna make sure that it's an easy and seamless process for them. Um, so you wanna make sure that you are touching base for, with them, you're reporting and, and letting them know how it's going, when it's fulfilled, and also making sure that you are sending out a personal thanks to them in regards to your match. All right, so once you've secured your matching grant, it's time to actually create your match on the Mighty Cause platform. So to create a matching grant on the Mighty Cause platform, what you will need to do is go into your dashboard on your organization page. And within fundraising tools, you'll find matching grants. And within matching grants, you can click create. When you create a matching grant, you'll be able to add the, a logo, match value, of when you want it to be live, and as well as set what type of match it is. And we'll break down each of those types of matches now. So the first most common type of match is a a one-to-one -one match, which is a 100% match per donation. So as I mentioned before, this means that if someone donates $5, that means that $10 goes to your organization because the grantor is matching that by $5. So this is probably the most common type of match we see on the platform. It's pretty straightforward, easy, self-explanatory for most people. Um, you'll see below that there is an option to match, match up to a maximum dollar amount per donation. So for example, if you are, you know, very lucky and, uh, or, you know, fortunate enough, I should say, um, to have donors that are donating at a large amount, um, you can set a maximum amount per donation. So for example, if you're receiving a thousand dollar donations and you want to make sure that that match is spread out, you could set it up so that the max dollar amount per um, donation is $100 so that if anyone donates $100, only $100 of their donation is matched. Um, so as I mentioned your earlier, your um, matching up percentage doesn't have to necessarily be 100%. You can have 50%, 300%. You can have any type of percent that you want. 100% is just the most common, but depending on you, know, you and your grantor and what they've agreed upon, you can set different conditions for your match. All right, so then the next is the cumulative threshold matches. So as a reminder, those are ones where you have to reach the threshold in order to receive the match. So apply total match when total dollars raised equals the match value. This sometimes can confuse some organizations, but what this means is that what you were essentially saying is that your grantor has agreed that they are only going to give you, in this example, $500 only when you've raised $500. So it's not per donation of percentage. It's you have to raise $500 in order to get the $500. Um, so that is what a uh, cumulative threshold match when it comes to dollars refers to. So as you see in this example, um, there's a match tile here that shows um, this organization has $500 match and they all have only, they need $325 more in order to receive the $500. Um, at apply total match when a certain quantity of donations is received is based off the total donations that the organization has received 
during the time periods that they've stated. So if one donor donates twice during this match, it's counted as two donations. However, the third cumulative threshold match available is apply total match when a certain number of unique donors is reached is dependent on how many total donors have made a donation to your organization during your match period. So if one donor donates twice during your match, it's counted as one donor. So once you've kind of set up your match uh, type, you also have different conditions that are available that I quickly want to kind of break down so that when you are creating your match, you can easily decide what you want enabled or disabled. So set a minimum per donation amount before match is applied, meaning that you want a minimum amount for donations <laughs> before your match is applied. Um, so meaning that if you know someone, let's say you wanna set a minimum to $10, that means that if someone makes a donation of $5, that won't count towards your match. So why is that something that an organization would want to enable? Well, if you're pushing for donors to make higher uh, donation amounts, um, that is a useful uh, tool or strategy to implement, which is setting a minimum saying, hey, in order for your donation to be matched, you have to make, for example, a minimum of $25. And that motivates or incentivizes donors to make a larger amount. So these are all optional, just to also clarify, you can have it enabled or disabled. Include offline donations a match, meaning that any offline donations you input will be included or not included in the match. Um, include organization fundraisers in the match, meaning that any fundraising pages created for your organization, they receive a donation, your match is included. And apply match once per donor would mean that if you do have a one-to-one -one match, um, you're matching 100% per donation, but you only want it to be applied once per donor, you can um, enable that so that if a donor donates twice, it's only counted once, even if it's a 100% per donation match. And then the email that you would enter here would be the email um, that you would receive a notification once the um, matching grant is met. So that could be yourself or it could be the grantor. Um, I've seen 50-50, it's up to you, but uh, that email address listed there would receive an email notifying them that the grant has been met. Some other uh, tidbits about the matching grants tool I want to cover is one tool or one aspect of creating a matching grant, which is called including match value in page metrics. Um, I want to cover this because we do receive questions about this, and I think it's helpful to break down um, and help understand what this means. Um, so when you uh, have a matching grant and a match value, this tool means that if you have a thousand dollar matching grant and you have this enabled and it's a one-to-one -one match, um, when a donor makes $5, your metrics on your org page will jump by $10. So it's automatically including that match value in your page metric. So donors will automatically see on your page that that match is being counted and included. Um, so if your grantor is planning on fulfilling their donation online, we recommend disabling this option because when your grantor then goes to fulfill their match, um, your metrics are already including that with the tool. So you wanna disable that. If they are planning on fulfilling their match offline, then you can keep this enabled um, and it will automatically, as I mentioned, include that match value in your metrics. However, one thing to know about Giving Tuesday and um, Mighty Causes Giving Tuesday event is that only online donations count towards the leaderboards. So if your grantor is planning on making their donation offline and you are entering that, only online donations appear on the leaderboards. Um, so match values don't appear on the leaderboards, only online donations. As well, um, when it comes to setting up your start date and end time, you wanna make sure that you are double checking this and making sure that you have set up the correct right date and time um, for your match to start. Um, so for Giving Tuesday a Mighty Cause, early giving starts on November 15th and it goes until uh, November 29th. 
So that's the time period I've set for this particular match. If you are setting up multiple matches, one thing to also note is that matches are independent from each other, meaning that if you set up two matches to start and end at the same time, they're not looking at each other to see if one donation was matched during one and if it wasn't, then it's being matched on the other. If they have the same start date and end time, any donations you receive during that period will count towards those matches. So if you do want matches to start and end at the same time, you are more than welcome to do so, but that's just something to note that it's going to be counting those same donations. However, if, you, if your intention was that you want each match to be start and end as, or to start as one ends, um, you can queue your matches um, to go one after the other. Um, so to do that, you will first have to create your first match and grant. So you kind of need a starting off point. So whatever your first match that you want to start. And then for your next match, when you go to create it, you'll see an option that says queue this grant to begin immediately after another grant completes. And then you can select the matching grant that you want um, it to start after. Um, so that is how you would set up a queued matching grant um, for your organization. Um, some things to note though about queued matching grants is that um, if a donation, um, as I kind of emphasis prior, matches are independent from each other. So if a match, um, if a donor makes a $100 match towards the end of your match and you only had, let's say $50 left of the match, only $50 of that $100 donation will be matched. The rest of that donation isn't going to be going on to the next queued match because that queued match is not live yet. Maybe a little confusing, but if you really think about it, matches are completely independent of each other. They are just making sure that that match in itself is being matched fully based off the donations that come during that period of time. So just some things to note, not necessarily that you'd run into, but some helpful things to know as you are working with these matches. So some just common questions that we receive in regards to matching grants. So does a matching grant have to be processed online? So no, your match, your grantor can make a donation however they see fit. However, for the Mighty Causes Giving Tuesday event, only online donations will count towards leaderboards and prizes. Um, so if you don't see your match value included on the leaderboard, that is because only online donations count towards leaderboards and your grantor would have to make their donation online then. Um, do donations made to peer-to-peer -peer or fundraising pages count towards the match? So this is totally your choice and dependent on how you want to set up your match. Um, as you saw, you can have where your matching grant does not count towards any fundraising pages or it does. So it's totally up to you. And can I have more than one matching grant active at the same time? We've spoken about this. Yes, you can have more than one at the same time, or you can queue one to go after the other. And if anything goes wrong with your matching grant, first, take a deep breath. And one important thing to note is that the matching grants tool on the platform, it's a reporting and display tool. Right. So it's really just meant to help you calculate and also display to donors that you have a matching grant available and calculates how, you know, that you've received your match. So if something goes wrong with your matching grant, we can always help fix it. So contact our support team and we can walk you through and help get your matching grant fixed. So once your matching grant is added or created, um, once it goes live, so once the start date that you entered hits, so if, it, if the start date I've entered is um, today at this time, then a button will be added to your donate button, a sticker that will say that you have a match live. Uh, and if a donor clicks on that uh, little button, then it will take them to a match tile that will break down exactly what the match is, who the sponsor is or the grantor. Um, who it's supporting and how much you have left of the matching grant. 
Um, donors can also search for any organizations with matching grants through the search. So there's a filter where they can see all donations that have matching grants. And as well on the homepage on Giving Tuesday, there will be um, a place where donors can really easily see every organization that has a matching grant. All right, so lastly, we'll talk about before we get into questions is promoting your match. Um, because once you do the hard work of receiving a match, entering it into the system, you want to make sure that you let everyone know that you have a match. So you definitely want to make sure that you are including it in your email communication. You are letting them know that you have this match available. And as well that you're building hype around it on social media. I have an example, I have a really great example of a Facebook post that the Woods Humane Society um, created in regards to a match that they had active. This is a really great example of something super simple, sweet and easy, really gets the point across that tells donors don't miss your chance to double your donation and that they can save twice the lives for animals that they are rescuing and rehabilitating. Um, so, so you want to make sure you're including this in your email and social media communication and as well on your website, any uh, area where you're talking about Giving Tuesday or directing people about your different Giving Tuesday campaign, include the information about your match so that they are aware of your match and that uh, they can make a, a large um, impact. Um, as well, you can utilize traditional collateral. So you could, if um, your organization typically creates flyers or signs or postcards, it, that's also a really great opportunity to include that information in that language that their donation can be doubled or tripled this Giving Tuesday through you know, your donor support. Um, and making sure that your network of uh, your support team, your network, is promoting the match to their network of people. Um, so anywhere that you can really promote your Giving Tuesday campaign, you should also be promoting your match overall. All right, so I'm going to hop over to questions. All right, so first question I see is, would you suggest pulling together a number of matching grants if there are 2,000 to 5,000 and have a number of people wanting to match these smaller amounts. Um, so it varies depending on exactly, um, right, so like the overall goal. I would say typically, I think it is a little bit better to have a larger amount um, provided. However, if there's a specific prize that you're trying to reach, like a power hour or, um, you know, et cetera. I'm not sure if you're participating giving to a mighty cause or another giving event, but if it's a particular prize that you are trying to um, compete for, that also could be really great opportunity to have a specific match for, um, you know, a specific um, time frame. Um, and as well, just a little bit about that um, in regards to dividing up or adding it all together. That also really depends, and that's why I spoke about like communicating with your nonprofit, with the grantor and their expectations, because for some, they've communicated to their grantor or the grantor has made it clear they really want their name publicly shown, they're expecting it to be shown. So you want to make sure you just set expectations about what exactly, you know, they are expecting, et cetera. But um, I do think that from what I've seen, just in regards to also managing it, it's a little bit easier having a larger amount that is available throughout the day. Yes, uh, will this be recorded webinar? Yes, so the slide deck and the webinar will be emailed out and provided. It will also be included in the nonprofit toolkit on our Giving Tuesday site. So that will all be sent out and provided to you guys. All right, I see some questions coming into the chat. So I'm just gonna hop in. Um, so let's go through, do you provide landing pages for each organization and what do they look like examples? Yeah. So, um, for giving Tuesday on mighty cause organizations, each organization has their own organization page where they can share their, you know, their mission information about them, what their giving Tuesday campaign is all about. And that's where also your match tile and, um, donate button would be. 
Um, and if you go to givingtuesday.mightycause.com, you can share a little bit more, you can learn a little bit more about the overall event and the platform. Um, and yeah, just I'm seeing a little bit more about getting a copy of the presentation. Yeah, so this will all be um, any registered individuals, this will all be emailed out and uh, both the slide deck and a copy of the recording. Okay, um, we get grants from state and federal organizations that often require we provide a match. Can you advise how we can use your platform to do that? Um, I would need a little bit more detail about exactly the requirement um, that your state and federal organizations, uh, what, what is their exact requirement and that you providing a match or, um, so I think, you know, really the matching grant tool on the platform is really used as a, as a fundraising tool for, you know, a campaign. So if you did have a match and you wanted to use it for a fundraising campaign, the matching grants tool on our platform help you display that, report that, et cetera. Um, so I would need a little bit more details about exactly, you know, what you're looking to do with a match. Um, pulling up to the chat. Okay, so in regards to cost to participate, so it is completely free to participate in our Giving Tuesday event. Um, we do have transaction fees per donation. However, donors can actually cover those fees. So if, and typically we find more than 85% of donors typically cover fees associated to a donation. Um, so there are no additional costs other than that um, to participate in our Giving Tuesday event. Um, So I think someone asked previously, uh, people always wonder if we will get the gift, whether or not we meet the match. I prefer to get matching gifts that will pay off even if we don't meet it. How do we explain that? I think that's a really good question. Um, and I think it also varies on, right, like how much the exact match is and historically how much have you not been, like what's the percentage that you've been meeting it or not meeting it? Um, cause maybe there can be some refinement in regards to like, if historically you've seen that, you know, you're only meeting 50% of it or 75% of it, um, you may then want to maybe have divide that match up into two different phases, um, or so that there's smaller amounts, or maybe you do want to change up, right. The different types of matches. It's not a one-to-one. -one. So I think it just depends on historically what, you know, what exactly has been your success um, with matching gifts prior. Um, I would say from what we've heard, at least from nonprofits, um, and you guys can speak differently in the chat um, if you have your own experiences. Um, we haven't heard too much um, of pushback that nonprofits receive in regards to donors who are confused or upset of a uh, organization still receiving the full amount. Um, but obviously it's always great to report to, you know, donors that you were able to reach a hundred percent of the match. But, you know, um, if, uh, but of course, you know, if you're unable to do that, um, you know, I think from what we've heard is that we, organizations haven't received too much, uh, pushback, um, you know, if, or still report that they received the full amount if the grantor has been, you know, nice enough to say they can still receive the full amount if that's the case. Um, just in regards to pricing. So uh, yeah, so the pricing, um, any questions about pricing that would be related to our year round platform. So our year round platform does have a um, subscription, but to participate in our giving a Tuesday event, um, you don't need a subscription, it's free to use you know, I would say like consider it like a trial because you have access to all of the essential tools and features that you need in order to participate in Giving Tuesday and fundraise. You don't have to, you know, there aren't any hidden costs. We do have an advanced plan if you do want more comprehensive tools and features, but um, 
yeah, there's to participate in the event, uh, there is no additional fees. After the event, if you are interested in using Mighty Cause, um, there are those subscription fees, but you know, we're more than happy to kind of talk through with you what those are and break down exactly what tools and features you need. Uh, Are there any other questions that anyone has? I don't see any further. I'm not sure if I missed any, but. Okay. All right. I don't see any further. I hope this was helpful and breaking down something that can sometimes be a bit complicated for. Uh, uh, many people, I understand matching grants can be very complicated and tough. So I hope this was helpful and we'll be emailing and sending this out to everyone. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.